Hello people, in this video let us look at acute flaccid paralysis causes. So first of all, what is acute? Acute means rapid in onset. Flaccid means what? There is a weakness of the muscle, okay? So the muscle is very flabby. It is There is paralytic illness. There is paralysis of the muscle. But what type of paralysis it is? Very uh, hypotonic kind of a thing, okay? This is, it won't contract at all the muscle. That is flaccid paralysis, okay? Paralysis means no motor function. So imagine your leg is like so flaccid, uh, paralysis, you cannot contract the muscle. That is flaccid paralysis. Why does it happen? So this one, you can remember something like anything from the spinal cord onwards kind of a thing you can remember in general, okay? So this acute flaccid paralysis, suddenly why it will happen means because of spinal cord disease, overall you can understand, right? Well, let's zoom in a little. So basically spinal cord disease, some problem with the spinal cord. You can understand, right? Overall high level we are telling you, spinal cord. Then some anterior horn cell, some issue or some nerve issue or some neuromuscular junction issue or the muscle issue. These are the ones that will cause acute flaccid paralysis. Okay, this much you have understood. So each of this you have to write some examples. Okay, uh, this can happen because of poisons, toxins, after OP poisoning, after a long time, these people can develop some paralysis that's called as neurotoxic fl flaccid paralysis. So the cause can be toxins, trauma, right? Uh, so we can add all that, right? So basically, what the textbook says is, why does acute flaccid paralysis AFP happen? Spinal cord disease like transverse myelitis. Why does this transverse myelitis happen? There's inflammation of both sides of one section of the spinal cord. This is what they're saying here. This may because of uh, be because of any virus, etc. Okay. Then spinal cord compression. Are you able to see here? We are looking at the spinal cord. The spinal cord is compressed. Why do you think the spinal cord can get compressed? Maybe because of some uh, alignment problem or some uh, autoimmune problem, some issue, okay? But anyway, spinal cord is affected. We are not looking at too, too much of details. Trauma happened. Obviously, your spinal cord uh, got some trauma. Toxins, we told you. Then coming to anterior horn. Okay, now we have moved on. Guys, are you there? We are looking at acute flaccid paralysis causes. Okay, now you are understanding, right? We are moving on from the spinal cord onwards. The spinal cord, anterior horn cells, then nerve, neuromuscular junction, and here's your muscle. So each of this we are looking at the causes. Okay, so we have finished the spinal cord diseases. So do you know, do you know first of all why, why we are looking at all this? Why the hell are we learning this acute facet paralysis causes? Yes, because in polio there is, there can be acute flaccid paralysis and you want to rule out the other causes of acute facet paralysis. So you will collect samples of stool samples from these people and you will try to find out whether this person has polio or not or is there some other cause which is causing the acute flaccid paralysis this is the surveillance afp surveillance so you should know this very much in uh, for polio okay so what is it now we have come to the anterior horn cells now let us look at what will affect the anterior horn cells polio polio virus will affect the anterior horn cells this is the anterior horn cell so polio will affect here and that's why that person will have acute flaccid paralysis and even non polio enteroviruses can cause um, as acute flaccid paralysis. Now, first of all, what is enterovirus non-polio? Let's look at this. See, in the types of viruses you have seen in RNA viruses, you have pico RNA viruses in that you have enteroviruses, under that you have polio. Other enteroviruses which are non-polio uh, are uh, Coxsackie virus and uh, that's all the other things I think we don't need to know. We never heard those names. So, let's come back here, guys. So, we were looking at uh, what other viruses and uh, we saw what Coxsackie, etc. Now coming to neuropathies, now we have left the spinal cord, come ahead with the nerve. So now we will look at the nerve. Okay, fine. So we are here. Where are we? Nerve means yellow, right? We will use yellow color. Please give yellow. This is the only color we have, which is so yellow. Actually, wait, isn't it? So this nerve is going all the way to your neuromuscular junction. Okay, but let us see what will happen to this nerve. This nerve can get affected by guillain barbe syndrome. What is this guillain barbe syndrome? No, it is autoimmune condition which affects the nerves immune attacks the nerves. This is a very important differential for uh, polio uh, flaccid paralysis. Okay. Immune attacks the nerve. Okay. Immune attacks nerve. No need the and all. Okay. Immune attacks nerve. Then Guillain barre syndrome very important. Say this 100 times. Okay. Guillain barre syndrome. What is the spelling? Barre. Guillain barre syndrome. Okay. Traumatic neuritis. So always here and there write one one trauma, one uh, toxin and all that you keep writing. Okay. Post diphtheritic neuropathy, this is also very important. Post diphtheritic means after diphtheria neuropathy. Diphtheria is also toxin, right? It is a bacteria that attacks with toxin. 
So all that porphyria, some problem with the hemoglobin, isn't it? Porphyria. Basically, this porphyrin will build up in the body. This porphyria is actually essential for making uh, hemoglobin. It says this porphyria is uh, lots, lots. Vasculitis is some uh, problem with your blood vessels. So I'm thinking this is affecting the nerves because nerves also need some blood supply, isn't it? They also need nutrition. Then uh, neuromuscular junction. Okay, guys, uh, did you just get surprised there? Yes, nerves also need blood supply. That is called, so, called as vasa nervosum or something, right? Yeah. Now we have left the nerve. Nerve over. We are proceeding. Where are we going now after the nerve? Neuromuscular junction. Very good, people. Very good. So neuromuscular junction, what will affect? Everybody on earth knows myasthenia gravis. Autoimmune condition, isn't it? Myasthenia gravis. We'll use some other color because the textbook didn't say much about this. Botulism, botulism is what again toxin only, it's a toxin, it will affect your muscles, muscle will relax, they won't contract, right? Eaton Lambert syndrome or Lambert Eaton syndrome, let's look at this, we have forgotten, we have read all this in physiology. Autoimmune again affecting muscle, neuromuscular junction it's affecting, wherever myasthenia gravis is there, you write of Lambert and Eaton also, right? So, but these people, I think they will have weakness in the daytime itself, right, in the morning itself. Before they start any work itself, they'll have. But myasthenia gravis, they'll have the weakness at the end of the day, isn't it? Something like that was there. So if you write uh, myasthenia, write Lambert, Eaton also. Then coming to the muscle now. Yay, we reached the muscle, guys. The muscle that is not working, actually. Yes, so here we are. So muscle itself is inflamed, inflammatory myopathy. Where did you see all this inflammatory myopathy? In dermatomyositis and all we saw this, right? Uh, because of malignancy or some autoimmune condition, etc. The muscles are inflamed. Okay, periodic paralysis. Some periodic paralysis happens in these people, is it? But why? Muscle disorder. Hypokalemia, such a cute one actually. This is so nice. Hypokalemia, low potassium. Muscle is not contracting. Okay, muscle is flaccid. Infections. Everywhere write one infection, toxin, trauma, all that you write, okay. Then finally, uh, what muscle, what did you learn? Muscle has some inflammation, it has some infection, it has some, um, what did we say? What was it? Hypokalemia, do not forget. So toxins like snake bite also can cause OP poison, we told you, right? Toxins can also lead to uh, uh, acute flaccid paralysis. So in this video, you have looked at all the causes of acute flaccid paralysis. So cute, right? So, did you understand why this is important? Because you have to rule out uh, in polio surveillance, AFE surveillance you'll have. You'll have to go collect stool samples and find out what the causes of the paralysis. If it is polio, then definitely we are not going to get the polio elimination and uh, eradication status. So, that is why they are talking about acute flaccid paralysis surveillance. How do you differentiate the causes of acute flaccid paralysis? So, this is one step further. Now, you have to, you know the causes, but can you differentiate? how it is uh, because of this so because of that see in uh, gullian barre they are see uh, wait gullian barre where is that gullian barre here see gullian barre we put at the end okay we're going from the spinal cord onwards spinal cord anterior horn cell nerve neuromuscular junction and the muscle so uh, transverse myelitis is for the spinal cord polio is for the uh, anterior horn cell then tra traumatic neuritis is for the nerve i'm thinking right neuritis then gullian barre syndrome is for what Wait, go back here. Gullian Barre is coming under traumatic neuritis and Gullian Barre is coming un under neuropathy. Very good, nerve. Okay, very good. So there's no issue in putting that last, right? Okay. Now, tell this. Transverse myelitis, both sides affected. Symmetrical. Very good. Gullian Barre syndrome is autoimmune attacks the nerves. That's also symmetrical. But polio is asymmetric. Okay, remember. Trauma is always traumatic, so it can be asymmetric. Okay, that you can understand. Then, in um, trauma, you'll not have respiratory insufficiency. So nice, easy to understand. In trauma, why will I have uh, respiratory insufficiency? In trauma, why will I have fever? Did you understand? Okay. And um, what else? What else? What else? Let's see what and all we can easily understand. Will he have bubble bladder complaints? No. Actually, this traumatic is very in, un, easy to understand. Everything is... A normal only in that okay except the nerve conduction right polio polio did you understand it is asymmetric these people can have respiratory insufficiency you know it's a very very rare one percent chance of polio to have respiratory paralysis right then bladder bubble complaints he will not have obviously polio will affect the, the limb and etc but bladder bubble they will not have okay no problem 
but in this transverse myelitis they will have bladder bubble complaints it seems okay people so just look at this and here in that try to understand basically overall we have told you how to differentiate these conditions also to some extent right now let us move on what else is there that's it guys so acute flaccid paralysis very important for polio surveillance that is why you learned all this that you learned just now in this video bye bye